what's really cool about this is that doing this kind of activity with an with an online lab allows you to watch a motion happen forwards, reverse, do it over and over again. So that it's very repeatable because I think that it makes some things a little bit easier to visualize than they would be if we were actually doing them live. And so if I'm going to have you guys do something that's online, I, I like to take advantage of the benefits of doing it online instead of just throwing a ball and trying to measure and hoping for the best. Because you guys remember we did the ball bounce lab, like how much effort went into, was that really how high it bounced? You know, um, with this, <laughs> with this, you can just rewind the tape and take a look at it. So um, here it says, our objective is just to analyze the motion of something that's in free fall. <clears throat> Obviously this happens on planet earth. So um, this is free fall on earth. There's a video here where they throw several balls up in the air and they all get to about the same height, no matter what the ball is. How interesting is that? You know, this would be a difficult experiment for us to pull off in class, right? Because how would we, how would we make sure that we were throwing them the same way every time? So eventually we would get tired, right? Anyway, um, so there's a video here. You'll notice that it's got a ruler here along the side where it labels the peak of these guys as zero centimeters. So if we're looking at something that's falling, um, we're going to start from the top and allow that object to drop down, which is what eventually happens in this video. Um, they, they do come back down. But you can collect data for both sides, and I think that that will show you some interesting things um, in terms of the stacks of graphs activity that we did earlier. Because you'll be able to see what happens if you have uh, upward motion where your velocity is positive and downward motion where your acceleration is negative. Uh, you also, as usual, have tools over here, a ruler. So there's a ruler that just gets applied to each one of these to make it a little bit easier. And a stopwatch. Keep in mind that when you're measuring different parts of a sphere, you want to measure the same part every time. And the easiest one may not be the middle. It might be the top or the bottom because it's a little bit easier to identify where the edge is than to figure out where the center is each time. Uh, this one is uh, a scaffolded activity like the last one. And so it really kind of walks you through things. Just like last time, don't be alarmed if if it's, if it doesn't give you points for things. It should give you points for each of these. Um, but I have to go in and enter um, points for the, for the little paragraphs for the writing that you do. It doesn't automatically grade those. So there's a place here for you to do some observations and then... Like usual, there's going to be a graph that you need to make, which is why you may want to have some scratch paper handy because you can jot down your notes about those measurements instead of scrolling back and forth all the time because that gets a little bit tedious. Um, this one says I have to lock to continue. So it, it just walks you through the same things as last time, how to do measurements. It gives you some instructional videos. If you feel comfortable with that, you don't need to watch the videos, of course. Um, you're going to make a graph with your data. It shows us the video again. Yeah, so here's how you record your, your information, and there's your graph. And keep in mind that there's all these little toggles you can do. You can download it if you want to, but you guys shouldn't need to do that. Um, you can insert insert rows uh, to your table. So I think that it tells you to take like 14, yeah, 14 measurements. So you're going to need 14 rows here. You can add columns if you want to do different kinds of balls. You can you can change the names. Uh, you can type in your units. You know, so it should be probably centimeters. Uh, this is for probably x and y. But this is a very adjustable sort of graph. I don't think it lets you calculate in here. So that's another thing that your your scratch paper will help you with. If you need to do a calculation, you can just create another column in your notebook, and and figure out all your values and then put them in here because you are gonna to need to figure out your velocities. Here's where you'll put your graph, and then it walks you through how to interpret the graph. So it's gonna have you describe the motion, and that's just, where does it start? What does the object do during the motion? And then, do you have a constant acceleration? So with this, remember, you, there's different ways that you can figure that out. You can look at velocities at different point and look at the changes in the velocity, or you can graph it and look at the slope of the line. If, it's, if the slope of the line is not horizontal, then it has some kind of acceleration. Um, so what we're looking here is what was, what was the acceleration of your ball? 